Seductive look today. What do you mean? A real smoky eye. Do I? I don't know. Do I didn't do one. Must be tired. <laughs> didn't do a smoky eye at all. That's nice. Is that a smoky eye? No, I'm just fucking tired. <laughs> don't you love when just when, when guys just hear terms about beauty and then just say, "Oh, yeah, you've got." A, is that a smoky? Is that a is that a kitten heel? Right. Oh yeah, I taught you kitten heel, and you've been using it ever since. <laughs> Wrong, by the way. <laughs> it's like no, that's a full on stripper heel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a fun one. That's a fun kitten heel. Oh, that's a fun little kitten heel, isn't it? Yeah, smoky eye. Smoky eye. Yeah. No, just tired. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. also a fun thing that what, people what is? say. You look tired. <laughs> you look tired. <laughs> Fuck. You <laughs> and how are you? Yeah, and how are you? Smile more. Smile. That's hilarious. That was like when I was bartending was the surefire way to just like turn me right around. Uh, what you should smile more. You look tired. Those are all really fun things that like guys sometimes don't understand. You know the lines. Yeah, I well, saw well, on if a you, plane. If, if you tell if you tell a lady. To smile more. Isn't that an insult? Like, I would never oh, say it's that. the worst. And it's famously been this thing that I guess guys or people think is like, a, hey, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm in a good mood. How about you? You know, and it's like. Sure. Just making other people. I don't know. Making them feel a certain way. It's it's. It's the patriarchy, really. So it's classically from way back in the day of like, it's usually a guy telling a girl to smile more. You'd be prettier if you smiled. You're so pretty when you smile. You should smile more. This kind of thing. Sure. And it's just, it's still sort of ingrained in some some people. I saw a guy getting on a plane uh, the last time we traveled. You walk by the the stewardess and was like, you look tired. And she's like, Oof. hey. She's like, or yeah, you look tired, something like this. And she's like, hey, that's not a compliment. I don't know what to say. And she was just like, I don't know what to say to that. That's not a compliment. And he's like, oh, I mean, I'm just trying to, I'm saying you look how I feel. but just, And just like di- digging, digging. Digging a grave. And I think, I think we don't do that anymore. Like, I don't think you would go up to someone you know now probably well enough to not say you look tired, right? Yeah, I, I never... To a woman. No, I, I, but I've always known that. So, And I think a certain generation has, right? And even at the bar, it was an older guy that would, be, that would tell me to smile more ugh. or to tell me I look tired. And it's this thing of like, oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and that's going to make you smile. Oh, should I? <laughs> Baby look pretty now, mommy. <laughs> you want me to smile if I'm not wanting to? You know? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, you want me to fake it for you? You want me to fake it for you? Want you want to fucking yes. dance for you? You would want that to make, dance? Would that make your experience better? <laughs> and you know, at the bar, we should be smiling, right? But uh, I also, guess. you don't really tell the bartender what to do. No. Because they put the alcohol in your drink. And they ha- they are kind of this weird in charge of everything, right? Like I, you bow down to the bartender. But always. there's there's certain jobs that people have that like I just I don't fuck with because I'm sure they don't want to do it. I've never met exactly a happy bartender who is just like, man, there's nothing, there's no other job on this earth that I'd rather be doing yep. than to serve a bunch of drunk people all night more liquor. Like me being sober, which we never were, but. Sober ish. Sure. Right. And serving these people and talking to them and getting all the, all the bullshit, all the bullshit that goes along with it. And then getting a, you should smile. Yeah. 
Yeah, there there's certain jobs like that. Um, stewardesses. I think that job. Yeah. And, and look, God love them for real. Um, because it it's. Do they not get paid well? Do they not? They get do, to but the the problem is, is like it, it, I think it, from the outside, it sounds like a fun job, right? You get to travel. Oh, you it get sounds to, like a nightmare to me, but yeah. Well, when you first do it, and then all of a sudden, it's just like, all right, great. You're crammed in this fart tube with 200 people who just want that drink or, or peanuts or whatever it is, right? And you've got to serve these assholes. And, you know, people are pushing the button and all that other mm-hmm. stuff. And then you land and, and you're, you're like tired. Waitress, all the like flight delays and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all the flight delays and all that other stuff. And to me, I, I actually value, like, how hard they work. So I try not to fuck with them where it's just like. I try not to either yeah because it's it's a job that like i'm sure they're tired i would never say you look tired i would never say that you know uh, i know the rule i think i know the rules as a dude where i think a lot of dudes do i don't think so yeah still some i would i would say it's 70 30 of dudes who just don't know the rules and how to properly talk to women even if you're you know playfully hitting on them or flirting or whatever sure. right there's still guys that just doesn't register and they're just saying awful shit and you're like man i i've even leaned over to somebody and said hey man that game isn't working like we should probably switch that up you know oh really he just kept saying shit to this one stewardess on a flight and i was just like yo man and she was just not you know i could tell i could see the frustration right and i was like Hey, man, you should right. probably uh, go ahead and sit this one out because sure. this is not like it's not your time to be on the court right now. Just an observer or whatever. Right. Um, no. And it's the same with like, you know, sarcasm, stuff like this. There, It's a really fine line that you're walking with flirting and sarcasm. Right. <laughs> right. Where it can flip to something else where the the flirting, you're walking this line of creepy. Right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Complimentary. Creepy. And it's so thin, right? Was there a line that ever worked on you? A line line? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. What, what was it? Pretty what, much what, what, any what line on you? will work if you're super good looking and it's a certain <laughs> time of night. So that's just true, right? And then <laughs> if it's in the beginning and you're throwing a cheesy line, the only things that worked for me were a transparency about the cheesiness. Okay. So a like, hey, I was going to say this, but that's stupid. Or something like this, right? Gotcha, Where gotcha, they kind gotcha. of flip it to like, uh, I know this is dumb or whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, again, that all goes out the window round what? What you what you reckon? One thirty, one forty five a.m. A.m. Depends on where you are. Depends on where you are. Depends and what on what state. Like. If you're if you're in L.A., you've already gone through last call, and it's just a uh, you, you know you're trying to you're trying to prevent a girl from going out to that Mexican hot dog stand out in the street, right? Because once those onions oh, hit then that you can't, thing, there's nothing you can do. You're not into it. She's not into it. That's over. You're just trying to stop her from going to the mexican hot dog stand right Right. um but that's la other cities it's like man new york you could keep going for hours yeah 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 (laughs) hours so because when i lived there it was just like all right cool man like we wouldn't even go out we wouldn't even leave the fucking house until 11 11 11 11. uh if we were were going to dinner now i cringe now thinking of that i love it Still love of it. Of course you do. Um, you're still young out. and, you know. I know, fearless. Single. You flirty know? and fearless. Flirty, single, young. I, just don't, I, don't, I don't require a lot of sleep, which is great for me. Sure. Um, but I remember, like, our go-to reservation in New York was 10, 1030. Yeah. Um, we didn't even think about, you know, 8 o'clock or 7. It was like, no, no. Oh we'll meet up at 8, pregame drink go to dinner and then whatever we were going to do after that, we would, you know, usually hit, uh, hit the clubs because the clubs were banging back then. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't like house music. It wasn't like it is, you know, today where it's just like you were different. I think the clubs have always been the same. It's the people that change. You change inside. The clubs have always been the same. Well, so, so, you sort of. You think they were different. I'll, t- but they I'll, t- I'll different. tell you how they were different, right? So in New York, 
New if, York if you is were, different. That's what I'm saying, though. But that's where I was at that time when that oh, okay. you know the club scene was oh, okay. was going on. Like that's where I was. So you know, you roll in and it's like, yes, there is a Gen Pop side sure. where people are. There's 500 people and it looks like a rave. There's a whole nother area of VIP where it's just like 150 people, right? And this was like pre-movies, anything that I've done, where it was just like, I knew the right people. And that used to be a thing, remember? Where it was just like, all right, cool. Because I'm sure you went through it in L.A. where you knew the right people to go into after-hours parties and all that other shit. And you were like, Yeah, "Eh." because I was a bartender, though. Right. But, look, every there's always people. Right. We always have a guy like I had a guy. Sure, sure, sure. I had a sure, guy sure. in college. I had a guy after college. Sure. Um, and I had friends who had like famous relatives and shit like that. And it was just like, oh, all right. I know this guy. Like I got this guy. Or the, it's a guy. So that that level of like clubdom at that point was just like I didn't see the rest of that shit. Right. I didn't see, you know, zinc oxide on somebody's face um in a whistle you know i didn't see a pacifier in somebody's mouth at that point now there was parties in college that i specifically went to that were like that where it was just like oh hey i'm going to a fucking rave right you know and then i knew what i was getting into but the club life and all that other stuff was like all right cool but that that's a whole different level simply for the fact of once you're in that room people just assume you're important in there and like i remember a lot of nights where there was a lot of disappointed ladies who found out afterwards that I was living in a dorm. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. In New York, you know, like, hey, where are we going? This looks like a really nice high-rise, like a, a nice high-rise condo. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. This is, this is the NYU dormitories. They bought a hotel. I was, was on, a, I think it was called Water Street. <laughs> they bought a hotel and converted it into dorms. So from the outside, it looked like I was taking them back to like this really fancy hotel. To be fair, in, in <laughs> New York, nobody's taking anyone back to a nice place. No, but if so, you are, game over, right? For sure, but not very many people are, and they're definitely not at that club. No, they actually were. Like, I, look, it was super rich and ex- like you know exclusive and all of that shit, right? I just wasn't the guy at that time. Like, I was in college. Right. I just was not the guy who right. was like Derek Jeter was in there for Christ's sakes. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'm not. I'm not. I don't have Jeter's money. Sure. I can't autograph a baseball and put it in a bag on the way out the door in the morning for you and say, "Hey, thanks for that screw we shared." You know right. that screw we shared? Here's a nice autograph baseball. Yeah, but there was a lot of times where it was just like, "Hey, you get out," because it looks like you're walking him in. <laughs> My dorm room looked like you were walking them into like a really nice like doorman, you know, and you're like, oh, cool. And then you get up to the thing and it's an RA. It was just like, can you sign your guest in? Can you sign your guest in? And they were like, yo, what the fuck? And I'm like, oh, I'm I'm in grad. You know, I'm doing doing this grad program. And they were like, oh, oh." you could see like the twinge in their eyes of like, well, he is at NYU. Right. But I'm going to a dormitory? Like, what's the... Right. And it was strange back then because uh, we... Like, my roommates, I was living in a... They, they put you in this quad, right? So there's two two rooms and you usually had a roommate. I didn't have one um, in, in my room because it was like two, you know, twin beds or whatever there was in there. I didn't have a roommate in there uh, because I was in school and then the other two guys were working at the World Trade Center and they were interning from like... University of Wisconsin, like the whitest guys on the planet. Sure. And they were working at the, the World Trade Center every day. And that was their big summer internship. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, the school put them up and all that other stuff. And, uh, yeah, it was it was one of those things where you look back on it and you're like, man, I think my best game might have just been being in the right spot at the yeah. right time. Yeah. Whereas you, you were working at, uh, like, we're, we're talking about the Rustic, right? A dive bar. I can't imagine the no, fucking I, lines I worked, that you heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I was, you know, bartender server for a really long time because I was an actress. So I worked at many different places, bartended at many different things. Yeah. And But the Rustic had to have been. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It's divey, and you think you have a chance. That's the other thing, too, with girls, is... If you see a girl working in a dive bar you as a think, guy, yeah. you were like, oh, man, I could take her out of here and give her everything she needs right? in this life. You and know, we're like, we're good. Yeah. You look tired because you've been running through my mind all day. Right. I'm going to save you. 
I'm gonna really save you from this life and take you all and whisk you, you away to a better life. You smile more. I could make you smile. You're it, so pretty with you smile. <laughs> There's a girl that you worked with. I'm mm-hmm. going to say who it is. Mm-hmm. She seemed like that type. Like if somebody came in who was like famous or something, it would have been like, oh man, just get me out of here. I'll do whatever you want. Just get me out of here. Yes, uh, the one that was sleeping with John Hamm and yeah, yeah, yeah. Siegel. Yeah. So she would get taken out. That had to have been her game plan, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Didn't pan out. No. She's great. She's doing fine. Sure. Somewhere. Yep. Still bartending. You bet. But has like a bartender boyfriend. Ah. And then eventually you kind of, you know, and that's all the girls from the Rustic that didn't do something else are now, you know, bartending somewhere where they can own a house from it or like okay. just their money goes farther and sure. then they've got a bartender or a bar back boyfriend. All right. All right. And that's kind of the and gig. That's the gig. You know, if you, if you stay in the life, that's what happens. Yeah. But again, I don't know who has the right answer. I don't know who's doing it right. They seem to be having a ball. <laughs> I mean, every day. Right. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. And I've when got... I wake up tired from the kids or whatever, and I, I I go, who is doing it right? Yeah. And that's what I mean. No judgment, because I really don't know what the don't right know the answer. answer. I don't know what the right answer Same. is. I'm with you. I don't know what the right answer is. I'm with you. Uh, I got. I've got one best friend who's a bartender currently, uh, a right. close friend. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if he like that. That's the. He seems happy every the day. The idea is to get to somewhere. Like, I've done it in Vegas before, and if I wanted to stay there and live that life, you know, you can make $35 an hour plus tips plus benefits. I mean, out there it's unionized. So, like, the idea is to get to a place where you can do it for a lot of money, right? Or to have more stability with it. Yeah. So, I don't know what your friend's doing, but... Hopefully I, he's, a he's, higher he's, echelon he, situation. He, uh, or, I doubt it. Yeah. I doubt it. He's yeah. bartending, but he seems like he's living his best life. And I it's know. like, I, I, I don't know. He's single. I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. Because I'm not even going to shit on that profession. Because no, I, I, I don't know. I don't know who's, who's doing, doing it. it right. No. I don't know. I don't have From the answer From where I that. sit right now, probably them. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe think about it. If you got to just because you used to drink, uh, you used to drink on the job, right? You have to. And every one of them does, even if yeah. it's just so you have like a little shot. Yeah. Kind of. I don't you don't have shots all night or get wasted because you have to make it until three clean up four o'clock. All of this. Yeah. So you just kind of keep this steady. So you don't kill yourself kind of. Uh, buzz. Drunk yeah. buzz, yeah. yeah. When so. I when I was a bouncer, we did the same thing. We would sneak back to the cooler and Just take sort a, of a yeah, sip nothing, or nothing crazy. Yeah, we weren't getting you know, ha- you couldn't get hammered or else you get fired. But exactly, uh, you have to but be... by the time your buzz built up, and we would get out of there around two thirty three, and there would usually be some after hours going on, right? Right. Uh, then I'd be right where I needed to be, and then boom, sure. I could go into that. Yeah. But yeah, I wish I had that answer in life, man, of, of who is doing it right. And I wish there was a, a way to like a machine that you could hook up to to people to equate happiness. And just how <laughs> because everyone, you don't see them in their dark times, right? In the times when they're alone at their house or whatever it yeah. may be, right? Yeah. Or feeling down or cleaning up their house or whatever it is where you could be like, what's their level at that at those moments or is theirs more of a peak and valley and then when you have kids and family and husband and all of this it's sort of like a a gradual plateau with no real big highs yeah kid Merit, you know, these yeah. highs, and then it's sort of just like a maintaining <laughs> of sanity alert, you're trying to stay alert <laughs> and trying to like get through your life and get to dinner and get to that glass of wine. I don't know. What's, you know? what's the shittiest pickup line that you've ever heard somebody's ever, ever used on you? Uh, the shittiest pickup line? Yeah. I don't know. I, used- I don't have, I don't have, I don't. No, you don't remember. Really? No, I don't. I don't think that there was one in the bank. I don't think. I used to get so 
like you know again 20s i used to get you look like mark mcgrath all the time from girls and i I did not find that entertaining because i was not a sugar ray fan obviously Uh, (laughs) i just want to (laughs) fly it happened it happened so often that finally i was just like yeah i am yeah i am i'm him I'm him. And like one time I, I utilized it through a whole date, a whole, I, I utilized that through an entire night one time, the Sugar Ray thing. Nice. Um, yeah. And cause people would look over and stuff and just not, they couldn't place it and didn't know why. And she thought that's what was going on. She was like, is it weird that all these people are staring at you? And I was like, you know, I just become numb to it. <laughs> oh my God. I went out an entire evening with, with a stranger as Sugar Ray. That's beautiful. Yeah. I would get 20. I was go, 22, 22 years old. Yeah. I would get, did we go to high school together? Okay. Which is like, you know, we didn't fucking go to high school together. Uh, you know uh, what I'm saying? You know, we didn't. Yeah. Um, and then there was this girl from Matchmen. Ellen or something. Ellen something. Yeah. I know you're talking about. She was like, do you remember that movie Matchmen? She played the little girl. Yeah. That like yeah. wasn't a pe- little girl. People told you looked like her? Yeah. So much so that I think I went with it one time at this like divey divey bar a little bit. <laughs> I did a whole entire night of Sugar Ray. An wow. entire evening as Sugar Ray. Dinner. Club. You name it. Because at the and club. And tried to act like you could. Well, here's the thing. At the club, I knew all the, the bouncers, right? So it was the hottest, you know, shit in New York at that time, right? Yeah. I'd been going there every Tuesday or whatever anyway. So when I rolled up and there's a line of 200 people deep trying to get into the, the hottest club and they were like, yo, hey, good to see you, man. You know, pounds, daps, the whole shit. Boom, boom. So they knew you anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they would just. So, I mean, literally not. It worked the entire evening. Until we got to the dormitory. <laughs> Stop. And you, you, you went that far. And what was, how was that going to shake out? I left mind? it with, Hey, cause it, again, it looked like a hotel and, uh, she was down the street and I left it with, I was just like, Hey, I've got a show in the morning. Like I've got to do, I've yeah. got to do some interviews and stuff. So I gotta, I gotta hit it, but this was rad or whatever. Right. Is I didn't know what to do. Like I had taken so the joke as, as far as close. it could go. Well, I, I couldn't close because I was, I was going back to a dorm. So I, I had no way around that. And it would have been awesome if you ran into him. I, he, well, here's the when thing. When you guys were together. I honestly didn't think it would go an entire evening, right? You thought she so would So as the night would progress on. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there would be like a playfulness of like, oh, my God, that was really funny. Holy shit, what do you really do? Blah, 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 and blah. And then you had gone too far to now it's like a malicious lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I lived to out. You, yeah. To this day, there is someone in the world. Who, who thinks that they had a who night. Who thinks they had a full, amazing evening with Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray. <laughs> She's super wasted? <laughs> no. She wasn't that smart. I don't see it. She wasn't that smart. Go back and pull up a picture from like. I don't know, be it 22 or whatever. Like, that's all I would get all the goddamn time. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah. So, hair. Yeah, the spiky hair. We had uh, blonde tips. Like, the, I, literally the you whole. You frosted your tips. Oh, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole fucking shit. That was the jam back then. Sure. If, I mean, if you remember, that was, you know, what, early 2000s with, uh, G, you know, Timberlake was dying his tips. Oh, you had yeah, Mark McGrath. Yeah, like, that yeah. was the thing where it was just like, all right, cool, man. Uh, you know who did it? The girl who lost her legs. She'd oh yeah, that yeah. was our that was our barber in college. So Allison Loman. Ooh, Allison Loman. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I do, I do. Crazy enough, she now lives in Ojai with her kids. Really? Up in Upper Ojai. Yeah. Look at that. If you run into and her, we were both at Bacali's one <laughs> night, and I go, definitely do not look like her, but. Thanks. Anyways, I was in the same. I was in this bar with Christina Applegate too. It was after some award show, or whatever, and it was this dive bar that was cool. Yeah, because I I see a lot of Christina Applegate. Yeah, yeah. I guess some people say that, but we were in the same bar together, and you go, nah. You know what I mean? When they're really there, and like the majesty of them, and we stand next to each other, it's like Android versus I, I you know, iPhone. <laughs> Where it's like, um, not 
quite, but yeah. If there's not an iPhone around, you may as- mistake it for an iPhone sometimes. <laughs> so it was like that. With those two people and you go. Uh, the one yeah. I really see now is Juliette Lewis. And more and more as she gets older, I'll send you a picture that she post on, posted on her um instagram and if like you i was dyed like, your hair yeah which i did used to have black yeah. hair and like be a little bit more gothy or whatever so i would get that and it's also what i would get more with her is the like mannerisms and how she is yeah so it was more like her personality as well as how she looked a little bit i i, I can see that for sure i yeah. you know i did a i did a film with her and She's crazy tall, though. Like, I mean, she was like 5'10 or something. 5'10 and super skinny and like a, a different type than me. But well, when you watch people on know. when it you watch people compliment. in movies, you don't really know how t- how tall people are. Like, no, it's no. kind of a guess. And then you see him and you're like, usually you're disappointed because they're really small. Yeah. Where you're just like, oh, guy wise, guy wise. Yeah. Where you're yeah. just like, you're a tiny little human. Uh, that's weird. And I think Rappaport either finished or is working on her documentary. They've been homies for a long time. Yeah. And um, I don't know if her it's finished Rappaport, yeah. or if they're still in post or maybe it's out. I don't know. But a documentary about her and her band and stuff and just her as a person. And he's just like, she's just fucking rad. And she is. She is. She, she is. is. I, I, we are uh, different and just fucking so cool. And uh, I'm, I don't know. I'm amped for it. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> the, the last time, because I saw her at the premiere in Sundance for this movie we did. Right. Mm-hmm. And they had cut her, they cut, this director sucked. And they'd cut everybody's scenes down to like nothing. It was like, I think she ended up with like maybe 30 seconds of screen time total. And it was like, you don't do that to Julia Lewis. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. And But even now, she's kind of, you know, she's getting little things here and there. And Well, I remember, she's but, but not, she's, she's loud and funny. And yeah. she just goes, well, that fucking sucked. Yeah. Like after the movie yeah. was over. Yeah. And I was like, ugh. And that's what we were all thinking and it was just like all right yeah she goes on these weird little rants on her instagram and like i don't know she's just fucking cool she's cool yeah she's really she's cool. cool doesn't look like she's had like that much or any work done and doesn't give a f like yeah. just i mean posts like to me, she's one of those last people from that last era who were just cool and could get away with shit all the time or it was just like all right now, I think this new crop of people can't right. or, or won't. I, look, everybody's trying to get a fucking Marvel movie, so I, I just don't think you can be that cool anymore. Uh, and especially looking at the totals for this shit, like, man, I, we should probably buy Disney stock in like yeah. 30 minutes. Uh, there was a story today that just came out that uh, this new Avengers movie mm-hmm. is looking at a $900 million opening weekend worldwide. I mean, that's insanity that is in uh, they said there's a there's a shot that it could cross one billion dollars opening weekend which is I, I can't even i can't even wrap my mind around that number um and it's a three-hour movie Ugh. the runtime came in just over three hours and i get look I, I don't know enough about i didn't watch the last one i don't i'm not a big superhero guy obviously um mm-hmm. said that a thousand times before we know but these these guys have done eight of these. They're all richer than Jesus, and it's like, man, you're now you're seeing Jake Gyllenhaal and and all of these people in these, and it's like, eh. it's like Juliet Lewis is still the last of them. It was just to like not have you? do that and to do, you know, she did that camping show, and she's still doing like smaller indie stuff, and hasn't quite sold out yet. You're right. Yeah, because I and look at loves doing stuff with her band and is way more into that. Like, yeah, she's an old school, like the old school actors that wanted always wanted to be in a band. Canal, yeah, 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 yeah. Depp, yeah. her, <laughs> right? <laughs> Whenever I think of her, she's automatically paired to me in my mind forever with Woody Harrelson. Yeah, just I can't. And she knows, that, and that's a nice get the two of them out of out of my head. And- yeah, but you want to. Like, because I, I, Woody Harrelson's cool as shit, right? Um, but even he's doing Hunger Games and right. Star Wars, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She never did. I don't know. Is she getting offered that? I mean, again, I'm excited for the documentary just because I, I don't know if maybe it's a choice. 
of hers. Maybe. Which would be fucking awesome. I know, and, right? You know, and to be more of like, you know, Juliet Lewis and the Licks, like that's her thing. Yeah. She loves that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I don't, I don't think that she would try and mess that up with any, you know, mainstream shit. But she'll still, I mean, she loves acting. She's fucking awesome. Yeah, she's great. So I think she's, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm projecting and speculating all about her life. But why not? Because I feel like I am her. Yeah. Uh, it's a podcast. <laughs> it's what we do. I've been, but I've also just been weirdly linked to her for so long as far as people, every time somebody says, who, who, it's yeah, yeah, Christina yeah. Applegate or her. Gotcha. And it's moved into more Christina, Christina Applegate only because I like, don't dye my hair dark or whatever I think is the only difference. But um, it's a weird thing when you get one person for your whole life that you just kind of weirdly feel connected to them. Yeah. Yeah. Like I feel I, I like I so. need to like send her a picture. Every time I hear, I just want to fly on the radio. You know, I think of that magical <laughs> night with you and what's her face and with you and little dum dum running around the town. Oh, uh, all through the streets of New York. And you know, look, Mark McGrath would have would have closed, obviously, because he's Mark McGrath. He would have closed. I think he would approve. Approve. Like he seems kind of he seems cool. Where he would be like, dude, nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so somebody's walking around in the world, man, just saying, Man, great. I had this one special night with Mark McGrath. That is awesome. Uh, I watched those town halls last night, by the way. Cool. Um, I don't, it, it seems early, but it's like, oh, it's, this is definitely not early. Mm-hmm. Um, you were, you were not up for that. They're putting these things on really fucking late. Yeah. Buttigieg, like that. Yeah. When did he go like on? 11. Yeah. I mean, it was something crazy. They did four back to back on CNN and it was like Kamala Harris, uh, Biden. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Not Biden. Uh, Bernie, uh, Buttigieg. And then uh, Elizabeth Warren, and it was just like, oh, boy. Uh, the, the, the claws are out, by the way, for Buttigieg already. They're, they're trying to dig up as much dirt as they can. I looked that up afterwards, and I was like, what is going on here? So out of the four of them, and look, I don't give a shit about any of them, but Buttigieg seems... The cleanest? The most interesting of the candidates. You know what I'm saying? As far as them digging up dirt. Oh, that, that, so that's just begun. Uh. So... He popped up in these polls at third, right, after just jumping in. And they, so what, what they had said um, in, in most of these articles was that the other candidates who were preparing to run did not prepare to run against this guy. So no one knows anything about him. And it's a race right now to try to dig up dirt so they can go after him. Right. One of the most interesting questions um, that was asked was of Bernie Sanders. Uh, they asked, well, they asked all of them, like Kamala Harris, but they're in different town halls, different people. And, um, I, I I really want to clarify this, that they did not have the questions in advance. So nobody knew each candidate didn't know in whatever town halls they were in, how the other candidates had answered. So you're just hearing it. Hillary got it that one time, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's not happening. anymore. She got it in advance. Well, you never know, but it's not supposed to, but when they asked Bernie, if I mean, here was the bombshell out of that night where, you know, for Bernie, they asked him, do you think incarcerated, you know, people in prison have the right to vote? And he said, yes, there's people that have done terrible things, but they're an American and they have a right. Uh, and, the, and even I think it was Cuomo who was doing that one. Um, he looks at him and he goes, man, I'm, I'm going to re-ask this. Like, I'm going to ask you one more time. So if the Boston bomber. Right. If he has the right to vote, like you want him voting. And he Mm -hmm. goes, yeah, you know, there's a lot of terrible people who deserve. And I was just like, oh, you could see the whole mood turn in there. And it was just like, what the fuck? Mm. What the fuck? And I'm sure every other person was like, no. Buttigieg said no. Uh, Kamala Harris said yes, I believe. And um, I mean, well, I'll tell you what it is. Um, the, the reason why it's important is most of these people would probably vote Democrat. So that's what they want. Those votes. They want illegals. Mm -hmm. They want people in prison. Like they, they want, they want and need those votes. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you get 
prisoners voting for shit. Like, what are we doing anymore? What are we fucking doing anymore? And this census battle rages on right now where they're, it's gone to the Supreme Court and there'll be an answer soon. But uh, the, the, the question is on the, on the census, are you a U.S. citizen? And they're, Democrats are fighting saying, look, we don't want this on there because it's unfair. It's unfair to ask and it'll, it'll cause people to be scared of, of the census and whatever. Republicans are saying, hey, man, we just, want to f- we just need a number of how many people are actually living in this country so we can tax people and what that number is. Mm-hmm. The problem is if you get that. So this is why the, this, this debate is raging on right now in Supreme Court is if they, if they make this question, hey, you're an illegal living here and you're actually able to get the number of illegals right. there, you can redistrict cities counties all that stuff for voting rights because hey man there's a bunch of illegal people living in this district right so let's include another district let's slide the lines over let's slide the things over and that's going to fuck with all the democrat votes they want illegals they want prisoners voting that's why there's no fight against any of this stuff Mm -hmm. the fact that it's going all the way to the supreme court and the fact that it's even an issue is surprising to me Mm -hmm. if you're doing a united states census report about how many citizens are living in the United States. Wouldn't you want to know how many fucking humans are living here? I don't yeah. like if, if you're illegal or not illegal. Great, man. Like we get You got to figure it out for food, yeah. hospitals, taxes, mm-hmm. roads, right. traffic. I mean, you'll, you'll, if you don't get a fair count or an honest number out of people, you don't have much to give individual cities and towns and states uh, as far as funding for roads and schools mm-hmm. and education. Like, It'll just continue down the shitty road. Right. Um, so I, that's, that's why this is so important, conducting a census every 10 years. They said the last time I guess they had done it was like 1950, where they had that question on there. And it was like, why? Why isn't this on there every, yeah. every single time? Yeah. It's because of votes. So this will be a really interesting matchup here with the Supreme court going into this, uh, that Kavanaugh guy has been super silent. They fucking neutered that guy. Oh yeah. He can't say shit. No. And like, if he votes, you know, one way or the other now, they're going, we fucking told you so. Yeah. We hate you. (laughs) And all they do is sniff like that over and over again. He's going to have to vote. Um, I'm going to leave a little Easter egg right here or an egg. Yeah. Easter egg is what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? For our friends. Oh, boy. We've gotten a lot of uh, a lot of messages about you like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Smooth. And now, yeah. That's a clean cut smooth. Are you like it? There you go. There you go. Now, that's going to be completely out of place for anyone that's just starting to listen to, to the shows. Yeah. Um, it's for Gordon Wagner. We're giving Gordon Wagner Gordon a shout Wagner out. Gordon Wagner and uh, You Rike It. There is a You Rike It Instagram that posts all of your You Rike It's. They have, we're on episode like 354. They've posted all of your You Rike It's mm-hmm. on a You Rike It Instagram. And they're getting like, you know, 500,000 views per thing. So uh, that's for them. That's for them. They said, you know, <laughs> you, you, just because you've, you, you, Change the format of the show. Now, Gordon, this is from you, Rike. It. Now, Gordon Wagner and I are out of a job, they yeah, said. Yeah. And listen, I can't have anyone out of a job because of something no. that I've done. And the you, the Rike so It ringtone. I will leave, yes. Is uh, one of, that was one of, that was like one of the top sellers on iTunes for a while. Yeah. I think it was like over 10,000 people had bought that, that ringtone. Everybody had asked, so we just popped it up. Um, so if you're buying that, feel so free. So there you go. I'll yeah. leave, I'll leave a, I'll leave a little, a you rock it. <laughs> a good rock. Good rock finding a you rock it. And I want to give the audience an update on the, uh, MIT scientist. Um, this, this is going down. I'm going to interview him oh, t- yeah. tomorrow. Oh yeah. Um, so not, I mean, knock on wood that he, you know. Is still in, but uh, I, it happened. 
Um, and he's a real Rizwan Verk is his name. Cool dude. Yeah, I so I, I listen. Uh, it's, so he's been on a bunch of shows and like fascinating dude. And I'm really really amped to sit down and talk with him tomorrow. And uh, I was surprised. I was like, oh shit. Oh yeah, he's so he got down, right back dude. to me. He was down and uh, and he was cool. And he's cool. Yeah. So I'm I'm amped about that. I, if that goes down, well, I'll tell you about it on the next show. And obviously, it'll, it'll run next week sometime. Uh, you and I are going to uh, San Antoine for yeah. a little bit. Uh, doing some shows. Yeah. We're just going to chill. Chill, dude. Chill out. I'm going to check out the downtown and have, have a little fun. Have you been to San Antonio fun. before? I have. Oh, you have? Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. What's your what are your, what are your thoughts on on the I you know I all you know, the times I've the been there River, I've never been to Riverwalk. <laughs> yeah, so I've been to Riverwalk. My brother um graduated from uh or yeah, graduated from his boot camp, did his graduation, boot camp graduation okay. there, Air Force. Sure. So I was there for that, partied, Riverwalk, just like touristy type stuff. Right. So I'm interested to kind of go there and just check out I've always been with family. Do you know what I mean? Like I was younger and I've been with family. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I've never been able to like actually see a cooler uh, downtown that's not packed with tourists. Well, look, and we're fiesta going. Fiesta and stuff like this. You know, we're going during Fiesta, right? Is it? Yeah. I thought it was right now. Cinco de Mayo. Oh. Fiesta's right now. Oh, it is? Yeah. What's the difference between the two? Do you know? I have no idea. I mean, it's party in Spanish, right? <laughs> And um, so it's just uh, you know. It's so they just, just your they just named named an event party party, and that's that's kind yeah. of the whole thing of it. I'm interested to go because it'll be look it'll be Cinco de Mayo and it's on a Sunday there, so I'm sure that place will be going off. Oh yeah, we'll figure something out. Oh, Texas has so many interesting places, um, across the board. Like I love. Uh, like uh, Bernie, Texas was the last place that yeah. I was there. There, I was like, "Shit, it's this small, like dope ass town, maybe twenty, thirty minutes outside of San Antonio." And I was like, "Man, this place is rad." I had an amazing brunch there. Yeah, like um, some of my beef fries, and I was like, "Man, this place is awesome." Austin, Austin is so an amazing different. city. Totally different. There's all these like different pockets, which I love. So yeah, I've been to Austin, Dallas, Dallas Houston, all of those. And so yeah. San Antonio, I wanted to, and whatever. I just want to get away from the kids, to be honest. I had a great time in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, Z- Xander, friend of the show mm-hmm. lives there. Um, Ace Factor Water. Uh, he's the, he owns Ace Factor Water. One of our, one of our, our, our good buds. And, uh, he's, he's from there. Lives there. He's got a house there. One, one there in, in uh, one in LA. And, um, he took me out to a Cowboys game and the whole shit and some barbecue there. And I was like, Oof. man, and there's a Oof. cool like little downtown nightlife with a bunch of bars and all this stuff in a row. It's kind of trendy and cool. And you're just like, man, I, I, I like this city. Yeah. I like Dallas a lot. I like Austin a lot. Uh, certain parts of San Antonio. Okay. I've never been to Riverwalk, so We'll see what happens there. But- You'll hate it, but that will bring me joy. It will. Mm-hmm. And then we watched we watched some weird doc on uh, that town of Marfa. Yeah. Who was that? Was that Bourdain or was that somebody else? Oh, yeah. It was, it Bourdain. was Bourdain. Yeah, yeah. Man. Because yeah. I, like, I've never even heard of that town, seen that town or whatever. It's a tiny town with what? Tiny 2,000 little... people. Mm-hmm. But they have like a Prada there and a Gucci. It's or... just like a weird artist town. And... um. Just soup. I don't know. Super cool. This little area. In I the looked it up. Of nowhere. Yeah, by the way, because yeah, yeah. I was like, dude, let's let's just go for a day and check it How out. How far is it? It's like four hours away. That's the thing about Texas. Sorry, you really don't yeah, understand yeah. how big it is until you're going through it. I drove cross country through there, and I was Texas by far was the longest. Where I was like, man, oh, am it, I it still in on, Texas? Because it forever. feels like I'm still in Texas. And then finally, when I hit like Louisiana and shit, I was like, oof. Yeah. Man, I'm that was Texas. Yeah. It really is the biggest little state and whatever. Oh yeah. <laughs> what are they the called? The biggest little state and whatever. I yeah. think that's what it is. The, yeah. yeah. The, the biggest little state and whatever. Yeah, I think that's on the license plate. Yep. 
It's, it's the biggest little state in whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's just and like just a sort of rolls a steak on a fork, you know, like yeah. a raw piece of meat on a fork. Don't mess with anything. That's it. Don't mess with. Don't Texas. mess with anything. We're the biggest little state. <laughs> Don't mess with me, buddy. Something like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Don't mess with me, buddy. I'm still driving through Texas. Yeah. Something like that. Don't I mess think. with me, Ponch. Don't don't me- don't mess with me, pal. Yeah, Gucho. Don't me- don't mess with me, Hooch. <laughs> Gooch. Don't mess with me, Gooch. I am still driving through Texas in whatever. I think is what it is. That sounds right. Do you have any? dreams or hopes at all in this life to pack up an rv and do like a big cross country with the fam with our fam yes i do only because i did it with my you did family yeah how was it it was awesome it was awesome we did it was winnebago yeah um with the fam and stayed at little campgrounds and it was really fun how old were you do you remember um i think i was 12 13 12 okay 11 or 12 something like this and then my brothers are you know 10 and then um i think it was maybe we didn't take the younger one it was something but anyway um and well we drove like like monterey grand canyon so yeah yeah, yeah. on the west coast pretty cool stuff over over there um i think it would be Fun. That would be fun, actually. And that's why I brought it up where I was just like, man. Um, because you have everything you need, you know, shower wise, whatever in the RV. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you get like a real nice one, we had beds, we would lay down on the bed. Your while dad's we, got one. He's got a dope he's ass got RV. One, yeah. And it was Can the you shower up, in that thing. It was the upgrade. Yeah. It was the upgrade from the Winnebago. You can shower, you can cook, you can man, do everything. All right. What do you mean? Can you shower? I did, you shower s- over the toilet, but yeah. Some, yeah, yeah, you don't know. Like some don't have showers where it's just like, all right, cool. There's a water hookup or whatever. Like, so I, yeah, you wonder if you can shower in there and, and do it. We rented the last time we did it was in uh, Penn State for that Penn right. State Ohio State game, and uh, you could shower in that. I was really surprised. I was like, oh, pretty much sh- everyone you can. Shit, that's a lot of water though. Well, so you. T- a lot of water what so you have two tanks so every every rv has two or three tanks so there's the tank for the fresh water tank for gray water and tank for sewage and when you go to these campgrounds you hook up and empty those ah gotcha and fill them up i know nothing about rvs by the way clearly when you started saying that i realized you didn't so i don't know if maybe we'll get a driver when we go (laughs) and kind of someone to because i don't i don't really see you hooking up the sewage pipe and like watching that kind of glug glug down i don't i don't mind it Right. Yeah. I just don't know if I. I don't mind it. Trust I don't. You I, to do yeah. I also don't stuff. know that it's necessary to hook up. You know, you can just let that shit go out in the street. I think. No. Ah, can't. you can't. No. Why is that? No. They do it in San Francisco. Yeah, I guess if you stop there, you could, and then you'd get the <laughs> fine from the poop police. Do you? I would take that fine. I think I would. I, no, you I, can't do that. I think. I think you start in L.A. because we could we could take your dad's and then go just drive to San Francisco, uh-huh. dump out in the streets there. Sure. Because that's that's allowed. It's a sanctuary city. And it's just like, hey, man, yep. Yep. Um, just pour all that shit out in the street and then bounce from there. And I think that'll that'll at least stop, you know, prevent one of my hookups. You know, I don't, I don't have to I don't have to hook up then in uh-huh. San Francisco and just let mm-hmm. that that dookie fucking flow down the streets. Maybe park at the top. Of like hate Nashbury and just let it sure, go. Sure, there you go. Go all the way down. You know, watch it. Maybe put a little boat on it. You would fucking do that shit, <laughs> and like I would die, die. Hey man, you can't do that here. No, everybody else is. Yep. Everybody else is just taking a Family shit in the street. Can so do it. I'll take the fine. What's the difference between my family of four doing it? You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> There's no needles. There's, nope. there's no needles on the street. We're not we're not putting syringes out there, so we should be fine with just mm-hmm. my family and four taking a shit in the street. Mm-hmm. I saw Starbucks, by the way. They're putting a, a syringe box in every single Starbucks now. What? Where? Yeah. No, they aren't. Yes, they are. Um, so they're starting in like the, the cities that like Seattle, 
Um, um, San Francisco and places that everybody's shooting up and nobody gives, gives a fuck a shit, anymore. Yeah. So they want people to be safe and all that other shit. And mm-hmm. since they can't kick out anybody, they're a welcoming coffee shop now and they can't kick out anybody who's coming right. in. Or else they get fucking... Yeah, you get, a, you get fined or whatever it is, is sued. So now you're going to have to... That, that, that box was the next logical step for Starbucks. Yep. I'm sure it was super cheap. We discriminate. We discriminate against nothing. Yeah. So now you got syringe boxes in all your. Have fun with that. If I'm an employee of Starbucks and I have to empty out the syringe boxes. Oh, dude. Boy. They they can't be made to do that. It's got to be a service, some kind of service. One would think, but imagine how costly that is. And now that's a part of your expenses. On your monthly reports for Starbucks is, oh man, that syringe box, that dirty syringe box is back again. Yeah. The world just gets completely it's heading destroyed there. by others not not wanting to offend anyone. That's what that's what it's that's what's happening. Not wanting to offend anyone or no not wanting to have any confrontation is when where I, we just let the whole when i saw that i was i i couldn't believe it almost um yeah i'm gonna pull like because it looks like a bright red box yeah i'm sure it would have to be um Pretty clearly marked uh so that no one tries to put a tampon in there and fucking yeah starbucks uh the- installs syringe disposal boxes to protect its oh they're protecting the workers what I mean, because they're saying the bathrooms are so fucked up, right? Uh-huh. Uh, th- I mean, this is Huffington Post, so it's not like I'm re- you know, it's not like eight shit, obviously. Um, but it's to protect the workers there, not not the customers, just the workers there. Yeah, because they, I, I guess, I mean, the- it doesn't protect. It doesn't protect anybody shooting up to have a place to put their needles. It is, you know. So this started in January, and uh, the employees started to to ask for them. So uh, they've already installed 25 boxes, or, or I'm sorry, boxes in 25 locations, including every single Starbucks in Seattle. So when they're changing the trash is when they get poked or something. Yeah. And so now they're making a clearly marked place. Here's the thing, though. If you're shooting up, are you really taking the time to be like, you know what? I'm going to put it in this box rather than the trash can and just leave it on the floor. Is that part of the, the, the process there? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, if I'm smoking a joint, it's down to the roach, right? I'm not. I'm, uh, chances are I'm too high at that point to really. Right. Like, I, I don't know where I put that. I, sh- I certainly didn't, you know, wrap it up in a, yeah. in a little baggie and toss it. Yeah, like, I don't know. No idea. Uh, I but yeah, the end game is there. So they were fined in Oregon, and here's why. Starbucks was fined $3,100 last year in Oregon. Uh, following complaints from two employees that were sh- struck with needles within a mon- month of each other. Yeah, um, so they were either sued by the employees or something happened. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So it's not that the needles are actually going to go in there. They just need to have the box as per the lawsuit. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy, man. That's what happens. But hey, let, well, just let everybody in. Because let's face it, if you're buying a cup of coffee, you're not shooting up, right? Yeah. You're and already so too wired have a at that customers point. Customers only thing, and then well, they maybe just buy one cup. So they've bought the coffee so that they can use to shoot up the bathroom. Why though? You can shoot up pretty much anywhere you want. You know. I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. Find a dumpster out back and just shoot up behind a dumpster. You're, you're good with that. Yeah, well, in certain places, yeah, for sure, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. I would think that you wouldn't want to be bothered while shooting up. So sitting in a, in, in a toilet at a Starbucks, because let's face it, there, no one uses toilets like a Starbucks. No customer base uses toilets. Uh, as soon as that coffee hits your lips, you're shit in your pants. So sure. I can't imagine what that toilet's like anyways. And then you want to go in there to shoot up within that, that scent of like 50,000 hipsters taking shits. Like that sense, what you want, right? Is you're 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 achieving your peak high. I'm like, oh, really let sure me let me jam works. this needle, oh, oh, and then you're just a wash in in the scent of you know five thousand hipster shits. 
who've been in there all day long. Just the logic of that on your part is is amazing to me. <laughs> so I don't even know if I can go down that road. I you think, know what it, I, mean? I, I think of where you would want to get. You think <laughs> that these people are just business suit. Oh, it's a little stinky in here. I don't think they're business suit. I don't think they're business you think suit they're, at all. Uh, have any shame whatsoever if they're shooting up in a fucking Starbucks? <laughs> all right, here's my thought process behind this, right? I don't care. If you're getting high, that's an enjoyable experience. No, right? it's not, dude. Yes, it is. No, it's not. You're only getting high because you want to get high. You want to you- get fucked up, right? You want to get fucked up. You want to not be sick anymore. At that point, they're just fighting off the the heroin yeah. sickness. You never know. I don't think it's a hey guys. It's not just not dropping Molly at Coachella. Everybody, it everybody is, who's I done heroin to... loves it. They love it. They're like, oh man, it's the best. Even Bourdain was just like, man, this is ah, that was the greatest time of my life doing heroin. He said it. Fuck. All these rock stars kill themselves over it who try to go sober later after going off of heroin. They're like, oh, I can't ever replace that feeling. It was so good. So if you feel that good, wouldn't you want to be somewhere? It's kind of like doing mushrooms or something, right? Wouldn't you want to be somewhere where you're like, all right, cool, man. This is a good place to get high. Starbucks toilet? That's not where I want to get high. You can literally smell like everything. It's just, it's probably a mixture of uh, quinoa. When kombucha. Have you seen like a a a heroin like flop house? Have you seen like yeah okay yeah yeah and to me, so to me that's a place naturally where you would want to get high right. There's not a lot of things around. Nobody's judging you. The windows are dark. It's dark in there. You you feel kind of safe. So that way, if you nod off or whatever happens to These you, people don't have you're a, inside a house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no, but you could. You can go to an abandoned house or go to the woods or whatever you want, right? Mm-hmm. Just kind of chill yeah, out. Just Starbucks. Yeah. Take your time. But if you go to Starbucks, you have to smell 10,000 shits, and that's where things... I think a Starbucks bathroom is probably 10 million times cleaner than the other places that you're mentioning. Eh, I'd beg to differ on that one. Yeah. Think of how many people are taking a shit inside of a Starbucks per day, right? Let's say it's a big location, Okay. Let's say you're looking at 400. Let's say you're looking at maybe uh, 500 square feet, 600 square feet store. You know, you you look every time you and I go in there, like when we're forced to in other cities Mm -hmm. and you're in line and all that stuff, you're like, ah, man, why am I in like Kansas City? Right. That's a perfect example. Kansas City. I was like, man, why am I in line behind 20 people? At a Starbucks in Kansas City. And then I watch, like, I, I'll see people going in and out of that bathroom. And I'm like, oh, man. It's just, again, as soon as that hits your lips, that triple or that uh, shot of espresso, it is apple <laughs> milkshake. Right? Apple milkshake? Apple, apple <laughs> milkshake all over, all over that toilet. Right? What's apple milkshake? The first one out is an apple. You know, and then after that, it's just a milkshake. Where is this coming from? <laughs> is this widely known, or did you just say that for the first? This is apple milkshake. This is known. This is a known thing. People right? have said apple oh, milkshake yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just apple. This is the stupidest conversation. Milkshake I've ever of had all time on this show. No, but you think about this, Jabes. I want you to think about this, right? So after like the tenth person or you know goes in, let's say you're sitting there for I don't know half hour, right? Maybe you're looking up some emails. Maybe you ordered uh, one of those those little hot pocket things that need to be warmed up. A Gruyere, a Gruyere, right? I you have neither in the in the half hour that you're sitting there eating your little sandwich and drinking your thing. Count how many people go in and out of that bathroom and take a shit at a Starbucks. It will alter your mind. I'm good on that, though. <laughs> like, I'm definitely never going to do that. <laughs> I think you will. And I think a lot of listeners at home will. Next time you go into a Starbucks, you know, and you, ha- like you have to go into a Starbucks, count it up. Count up how many ins and outs of that bathroom there are. And then tell Don't me do that, you guys. that you want to shoot it's, up. It's not a challenge that you're going to get any prize. It is for. a challenge. That, that is incorrect. I, I will give them a prize. Um, 
What's the prize? Get a photo. Get, get a photo of, of just a stranger coming out of the like a Starbucks bathroom with like a satisfied look on their face, right? And all the first person that sends that into Ross Patterson Revolution on Facebook, the first per- person that, that takes a pic of a stranger walking out of a Starbucks bathroom satisfied, like they just took a huge shit, I'll send them a free autograph book. I'll send that right to your house. I, and then tell me what your experience was. I guarantee you over under in a half hour, I'd say in a half hour, probably looking at eight, eight shits maybe, like four, four minutes of shit, 32 minutes. <laughs> That's probably what we're looking at there. Mm-hmm. And then tell me, just walk in after, walk in whoever the, the last guy out of there was, right? Just walk in there and then decide for yourself, hey, is this a place that I'd like to get high? Or, or, or am I just sitting on the floor smelling whatever disgusting human just came out of there? They're You're shit. so confused about heroin addiction. <laughs> it's, it's really I'm not, like, I'm not. it's hard to listen to. <laughs> Your confusion about what heroin addiction really is. Homelessness and heroin addiction. It's not, Jesse. Just saying. I'm just saying. And it's fine. And it's a fun little road to go down. And it's also a challenge that our five-year-old would make up. And would love counting <laughs> counting poops. Going in after. Smelling shit. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? So the confusion <laughs> on both parts. If you guys do this challenge, it's between you and Ross. No, I'll 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 put it on Instagram too. That's great. You we'll guys call it, can we'll, yeah, we'll call it the Starbucks shit challenge. Just go you in. Know what the end game is of that challenge? The end game is this. What I'm saying is is all all of the places in this world to shoot up. The last place you want to do it is where. 10,000 people have drank in coffee and then shit their brains out. Apple, milkshake. That's all I want you to think about. And then just just, just snap a pic with somebody coming out of one, just totally satisfied. And then let me know what that's like on the inside after that. Do you have a crime corner, James? <sighs> yes. <laughs> What a wild road this is. Stupid ass. <laughs> um, I do. Grime corner, grime corner. Crime corner. Um, so this is something I wish I could do right now. And the picture is going to be everything. So the picture of her that I'm putting up right now of the Florida woman arrested for calling 911 on boyfriend for not being nice. Mm, Okay. Uh, By by the way, the picture is going up in the video show. So subscribe on YouTube. Continue. And this is uh, brought to us by No More Cans Wichita. Ah. A little affiliate of our friends at Strike Force Energy. Oh, look, big fan of those guys. Obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, I wish I could do this right now. You know, just call 911 on you being like losing your mind, being stupid. Mm-hmm. Just being like, he's being stupid. Sure, Can you sure. come help me? Yeah. Um, so four women. So she was arrested on Monday because she called 911 several times to report her, ah. report her boyfriend not being nice. The boyfriend, nothing happened, right? No. She's the one that gets in trouble. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. According to the report, uh, Parrish used 911 for purposes other than emergency communication. The rest report says she dialed, dialed 911 a total of six times ah. over the course of four hours to report her boyfriend not being nice to her. Was she on drugs? You know, it's going to be up to you guys. To, to decide, to decide yeah, yeah, from yeah, yeah. the picture. But to me, the picture is this whole, the whole crime corner. So, so you're going to have to watch the video sorry, show for this one. You're going to have to I watch like it. No, it's going to have to watch it only because some of these, sometimes the seeing the picture and hearing just even the headline are enough. Yeah. And anyways, you know, after that challenge that you put up, 
I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing can beat it, really. Ah. Nothing can beat your apple milkshake. So, um, apple milkshake. So the thing, the the thing to remember here is that um, you can't. If you call nine one one for things other than an emergency, you're the one that gets arrested. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got so it. Don't do it. Okay. Okay. I, I like it. Look, the, there's sometimes on Jeopardy where they're not just asking a question. They're showing you where they are, you know? Mm-hmm. Hey, we're at the pyramids. Oh, yeah, This yeah, next yeah, question yeah. is this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. then you, you get a nice chance to see it. It's the same way with the video show. Like this, this crime corner mm-hmm. is one that you definitely need to see a picture of to You need to see the to picture and, 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 and go from there. Yeah. So when you post this, uh, this video show. Yeah. Now it makes you, it forces you to take a little look-see at it. Well, you know, I'm, and I'm not going to do that normally. It's just this one. You have to see the pic. No, of course. Anyway. Of course. Uh, now we'll get to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we? We shall. You want to give, a, you, you wanna give a, a guess at who that is? Something to do with poop. Howard Schultz. Oh, yes. Inventor of Starbucks. Yep. Um, <laughs> not just a, a, a coffee chain. But he, he's giving a way of life. Uh, yeah, he's giving people a, a place to shoot up now. Mm-hmm. Um, a home. A home, essentially. Mm-hmm. And, home uh, away from home. Now in many ways. Office away from home. Yeah. Right? Now he's, he's stepped down to run for president and left them with a, Whole pile a literal of- heaping pile of shit yep. that is accruing inside Starbucks bathrooms. And now needles. Uh, why Seattle, by the way? Why does Seattle have so many... Do you think that's tied to weather? Yeah, I think so. For sure. Portland, Seattle. All makes you these. just want to shoot up because you're so depressed about the weather. Listen, it's a, yeah, it's a pretty, dip- I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm asking. I've never I been. So. I've actually never been there. I think so. All right. That's strange. Yeah. So just move. You know? It's raining. We could say that to many. Flint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say that about a lot of places. You don't like it, move. Well, <laughs> I'm a heroin addict and I don't have any money. So you can't. Yeah. So you can't. Yeah. Well, look, Howard, I'm proud of you and all you've done. You got, out, you got out at the right time. It's known when to get out. And sure. I, I think he got out at the right time because he stepped down as CEO. He's no longer yeah. uh, running Smart. that company anymore. Yeah. I, I, think, I think after the, the, the refugee comments, you know. Refugee, and then those the guys that were arrested for being in black Philadelphia. inside, yeah, and then so. uh, and now you got needle boxes in every every chain. I think uh, I think you got out of the right. Employees, no one wanted to get out. Yeah, getting poked by needles. You're yeah. like, I think I'm good on this whole thing. No, yeah. no one wanted to get out. So proud of you, How How Show Howie. <laughs> Howie. Howie. Did they call him Howie? Gosh, I hope so. What's up, Howie? What's up, how no? Howie? Uh, who knows? Who knows? Either way, James, this was a fun, weird show. And all I want you to think about tonight is apple milkshake. That's a thing. People say that all the time. <laughs> For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. Subscribe on YouTube. Oh, my God.